Welcome to Switch Comics. My name is Marco, and we are back yet again. Wednesday, best time of the week, new comic book day. And I got a good little healthy stack of comic books past couple of weeks. I think it's been two, maybe three weeks have been kind of low, kind of light weeks for me. But I got, I think, I think 13 books this week, which is, you know, nothing crazy, but pretty, pretty decent amount for me. Uh, before we get into it, though, I quickly want to thank everyone again so much for getting us to 500 subscribers. Uh, it means so much to me, but more importantly, <laughs> what you all want to know about is who's winning the comic books. Now, I'm not announcing it right now. I'm going to give you all just a little bit more time, and in case there's any, you know, new people to the channel, you can go back every video, leave a comment on, you know, any video. Well, one comment per video. I mean, you can comment as many times as you want, but you get one entry per comment on, uh, or per video, rather, but you have to comment on them. So go back. If you haven't watched some videos, leave a comment. It'll enter you then multiple times. If I said that confusingly, I'm sorry. My brain doesn't work that well. But <laughs> I'm going to uh, do a video on Sunday, but obviously that one I will record Saturday night. So you have until midnight Eastern time Saturday night to get your comments in and then Sunday's video will announce the three winners for the comment comics I almost said for the comments you win the comments back no uh, no but I'm gonna announce the winners um, and you know it's gonna it's gonna be a good time I'm very excited to see who it's gonna be um, I'm actually really curious because like there's so many people that uh you know i've come to grow and know and at this point and i'm i'm looking forward to see well i guess i won't see some smiley faces unless y'all send pictures hopefully that'll be really nice actually if the winners send me some pictures of them getting it out in in the mail or whatever and they're excited that'd be that'd be really sweet you don't have to but it might bring a, a smile to my face anyway but enough about that let's talk about this week's comics so starting off with death of dr strange Number two, this has been a pretty fun series, one that I'm, I'm glad that I'm reading. I was uh, hesitant, I was going to pick it up anyway, but I was hesitant to actually start reading it because I haven't started Strange Academy despite owning it at all. I don't know what's wrong with me, but anyway, <laughs> I decided to go ahead and read it and I do feel like I'm able to follow it. I don't feel like I'm missing anything or whatever. Uh, however, um, little extra thing for you speculators out there. There is a first appearance of a group in this issue. So, you know, might be worth picking up. That being said, fun issue. The characters that are introduced are really cool. And um, I'm very interested to see what comes from them as well. Um, definitely, this is more so just about their introduction. And I think, because I think it's a five-part miniseries with, you know, tie-ins or whatever. I think this will really... Uh, be the focus is on these characters that they introduce in this issue. So, um, very cool issue for, you know, speculators, or if you're just reading the series, this is an important one I feel like is going to be, um, I, I could be wrong, I don't know, but I feel like this is the focal point <laughs> of uh, the series moving forward. And then we have uh, Thor number 18. You got Throg on the cover here. So, uh, la uh, was it last issue? Last issue or issue before, I'm pretty sure it was last issue. Uh, Mjolnir went missing. Uh, Thor was hiding it with the Avengers, and then Cap was like, hey, Mjolnir's gone. I don't know what happened to it. So, he doesn't want to seem like a weak king. He has to stay at Asgard and, you know, do his kingly duties or whatever, but he needs someone to, you know, go snooping around and trying to find Mjolnir secretly, you know, under undercover, off the radar. And so, uh, this is a, a recruitment video, or not video, <laughs> recruitment uh, issue, <laughs> of uh, him trying to get some help on that. And I mean, I, I don't think it should go without saying, you know, obviously he gets some help from Throg. I'm very excited to see. So this one wasn't part of any arc. This one's called Master of Whispers. And I do believe next issue starts with the arc God of, God of Hammers, I think is what it's called. Um, this is the next issue, but it doesn't say the arc. Uh, but regardless, very fun issue. I had quite a lot of fun with this. And I'm, I, I think it's setting up something that will be super fun. This one, while the series has been mainly serious, um, this one, sometimes, you know, even in a, when a series is, a series is pretty serious, 
it, sometimes you know I want to have an issue that's a little bit more lighthearted, a little bit more fun, and this kind of felt like that issue. So I really enjoyed it. It was a little, a little goofy, a little whimsical, and I feel like we're gonna have some fun uh, upcoming. So while also some serious stuff is on the loom as well. Uh, and then we have Phoenix Song number one. This one I again was also a little hesitant on maybe picking up because. Obviously, Phoenix becomes, uh, I'm sorry, Echo becomes the Phoenix in um, the Avengers comics, and I haven't read the Avengers comics, and they're on issue 49 right now. It's, it's a series that I've been like, mm, maybe I should start that. It seems like it's got some cool things going on in it, and uh, mainly, you know, Robbie Reyes is Ghost Riders in it, so I'm like, yeah, you know, that's, that's reason enough for me to want to check it out. But um, I, I don't know. It, I was like, I hope... I don't need to know all of that. And while I do feel if you've read the Avengers series, you'll probably know a little bit more than, than like I did. Uh, that being said, not knowing anything or not knowing much of anything is really, I felt like I was able to keep up with it. I mean, as long as you know uh, that Echo became the Phoenix, I, I think you're okay. <laughs> Basically, that being said, um, I when I first picked this up, I thought it was going to be a one-shot. And as I'm getting to the end, I'm like, nothing's resolved in this issue. <laughs> Uh, but there is more to it. I don't know if this is a mini series or what now. Uh, but you know, I got to the end and it's like, uh, you know, uh, issue two on sale, you know, next month or whatever. I was like, oh, okay. Well that, that makes more sense then. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I was going to be kind of worried if like, this is like going to be resolved in the Avengers or something. I'm like, well, I just kind of screwed myself over, but no, it was a fun issue. Uh, nothing crazy happened in this one. Basically, uh, Echo is getting used to her being the phoenix and it, you know that's a lot of power she was just a, a basically a regular human she wasn't uh enhanced in any way you know she couldn't fly or shoot lasers or do this or telepathic she was a very skilled you know top of the the top but still just a human so uh she is uh, getting used to it and trying to do good um but it's it's kind of difficult when you got the phoenix force inside you so, I'm excited to see where that's going to go. And then, the last Marvel book I picked up was a cover by, which I don't do a lot of anymore, but sometimes you just got to. Because look at this beautiful Momoko cover of my girl Magic, nonetheless. I love Momoko's work, and I love Magic. So it's a match made in heaven. I didn't even know this cover was coming out until I you know, unpacked it out of the box. And I'm like, well, look at that thing. It's gorgeous. So, I had to get that one. Um, and yeah, nothing else to say on that. <laughs> it does make me feel bad, though, because I really want that Strange Academy Momoko um, cover with magic on it. And it's, it's a pricey book, and one, one of these days I'm going to get it. One of these days I'm going to get it. Um, so, moving on to some Star Wars, we have The High Republic number 10. So, we're on the second issue now of this new arc. I don't know if this arc has a name or not. Uh, chapter two, out of balance, out of time. Uh, shadow of the. I don't know. I don't know what the art name is or anything. But hey, regardless, uh, now that we've moved past the Dren gear, I've I'm enjoying this comic much more. Um, I do think it is pretty interesting. Um, this issue um, kind of was some setup for the direction they're going next. Had a pretty cool, you know, they do it all the time, all the time, but there's something crazy that happens on the last page, you know, and it's like, oh man, it leaves you, it's like, oh man, I can't wait to see the next issue. So this one was definitely fun, and like I said, I'm very excited with the new direction on this series. And then uh, another Star Wars book, this one's technically IDW, but you know, we got the last issue, uh, number right, number, number five, yeah, <laughs> of uh, Ghost of Vader's Castle, so little... This one's just been a fun little adventure. Again, these IDW books are, you know, aimed at younger readers, and they're a good little time. Nothing of any consequence. It's just if you want a semi-horror kind of uh, Star Wars story that involves some characters you don't see that often, uh, you know, maybe give it up and pick it a try. Uh, wait, pick it up and give it a try. There we go. <laughs> And, uh, you know, definitely if you have some kids and you want to read stories with them or, you know, they're into the stuff that you like too and you want to get something, you know, that's more accessible for them, definitely, you know, uh, give the IDW comics a try because they're genuinely interesting. Um, 
and they'll vary, you know, there's some that I've really, really enjoyed and some that are just pretty good or whatever, you know, but um, they can actually be good comics, even though they're kids' comics, you know, don't get it misconstrued. Uh, this one, I enjoyed. I didn't go over the moon for, but this was a fun little horror uh, series, like I said, so it was fun. And then moving on to DC, I picked up the B cover, which I don't usually do on B DC because they're a dollar more. But check out this cool King Shark, or Suicide Squad King Shark cover. So, uh, God, I can't remember her name. Uh, Defacer. Uh, King Shark's uh, paired up with Defacer, which is a character I didn't even know existed. And I feel like I'm not alone there. But anyway, she does like graffiti and stuff. And I don't even. I think that's all she does is graffiti, as far as I can tell. But anyway, so they did a, a graffiti cover of King Shark there. And I just thought that was a super clean looking cover. So I was like, you know what? It's worth a dollar more. Let's go ahead and grab that one. This is issue number two. I don't think I said that yet. Uh, King Shark is fighting for a uh, in this weird tournament where they're trying to figure out like the uh, balance of power within the different species. Obviously, he's representing sharks. There's another... Like, there's a human, and then there's, like, Cockroach Man, and that's not his name. I don't know his name, but, you know, different, all kinds of crazy uh, animals and stuff or whatever. And who doesn't like a good tournament, first of all? You got all these, like, weird characters. I don't know. I'm not a big DC guy, so I don't know if these characters have popped up in other things before. You got King Shark's dad, which I have no idea how to pronounce his name, but he's a humongous giant shark. He's popping up and doing stuff. And it's been a fun little adventure, to say the least. Uh, I am curious to see how this will continue. Um, really more so based off the relationship between King Shark and uh, Defacer. And how it will evolve through the series. They're not uh, on the best of terms at the moment. There's a, a There was a slight bud of a friendship at the beginning, but it's been very rocky due to various circumstances that have gone on through the first two issues. But I'm willing, or I'm curious to see if they're willing to, uh, you know, make amends and, I don't know, who, know, who knows what's going to happen in this. But regardless, tournament with a bunch of shark people and cockroach people and, and I don't know, I don't know what else, you know. I'm, I'm very curious just to, you know, watch the, all that go through. So, you know, it, it's fun stuff. Um, you know, it's not like Mortal Kombat rules or anything. It's, it's a very serious tournament. <laughs> Other DC book I got, which, you know, I don't get a lot, but... I've been picking up their horror stuff, and I gotta say, Refrigerator Full of Heads. This was an interesting comic. I've enjoyed all the horror stuff I've read from them so far. Nice House on the Lake, one of my favorite books I'm reading. Uh, Soul Plumber, very good start, only one issue out so far. Um, I feel like it's gonna take a drastic turn after that first issue, so it's hard for me to really, you know, say exactly how I feel about that one, but a good start, and Refrigerator Full of Heads. Another good start on this, uh, you know, a new DC horror comic. Super cool. I like this cover a lot with a little creepy head popping out. Now, um, this one wasn't necessarily, like, scary in the typical horror. None of them really have been. Like, a Nice House Killing... Uh, no, wait. I'm combining names of different books. <laughs> I almost said Nice House is Killing the Children. I don't know where that came from. But anyway, <laughs> Nice House on the Lake is, uh, you know, just more so eerie and weird and maybe alien, maybe mystical. We don't really know. Uh, Soul Plumber definitely has some kind of spiritual or maybe, like I said, it's just first issue, but spiritual, maybe a uh, demon thing going on. And then this one, I don't want to give away too much, but um, there's a interesting artifact that is uh, introduced that is, uh, got some special ability. I don't, again, I don't want to, I don't want to say what it is because it's, it's pretty neat. I think the opening to this book is super strong and then, uh, the rest of it's pretty good as well. You're setting up some characters, um, while still having, my one complaint is, uh, once we, so like there's an intro, like at a different time period, where you kind of, you learn about this artifact first, and then you're introduced, I think it's just a year later too, so it's not a big time, I don't know, it's, it's not very far, I don't think, because it goes from 1983 to, um, where did it go? Yeah, 1984, it's just a year time jump. Um, that being said, um, 
you, you meet all these new characters, and I feel like when you're starting to learn these new characters that will be the focal point of the story moving forward, um, there's a couple parts where it's a little rushed, and not like, oh, I need to know more. It's just sometimes, I don't know if you're ever reading a comic, and it's like, man, this really could have benefited from like one or two more panels to make it a little bit more smooth so I know what's going on. Maybe I'm just stupid. I don't know. But that being said, very strong book. I, I do recommend it. Just a couple weird little moments where it's like, oh, that, that happened very fast, you know? Uh, <laughs> I feel like that, you know, just a little bit of transition could have helped that a little bit better. But other than that, super strong start. Very excited to see where this goes through. I don't know if it's a miniseries, does it say? I have no idea if it's a miniseries or not. Um, but yeah, cool. Regardless, miniseries or not, I will be checking it out definitely added to the pool list. And then we're moving on to Eat the Rich, number three. We're at the midpoint on this miniseries. We're on the indie stuff now, by the way, obviously. Uh, this book has been a bit different than what I expected it to be, in a good way. Um, I thought it was going to be more horror-oriented, um, you know, scarier and, and whatever, but it's, it's more a kind of a class thing. It's not like a real political piece or anything, but it's it's kind of about like moving up in the world and having to uh, do things that maybe you don't want to do to be with this new crowd that you're wanting to be and move up in, in your life and everything. So there's it's um, it's an interesting book. I really like it. I don't want to reveal... I kind of, kind of feel like I almost revealed too much speaking there, but um, it, it's still creepy and weird and unsettling but it's not like overly scary or you, there's not like a, a you know a lot of people chasing after uh the main character or anything you know trying to kill her or nothing uh, so it was a different direction than what i thought it was going to be uh two more books on this one and i am curious where before I kind of had like an idea, especially like on the first issue, I was like, oh, this is the direction it's going. Now I'm like seeing more opportunities, more directions of, of possible, you know, outcomes for this book. So it, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool to, you know, expand your, your thought process on it anyway and see what, what might be happening and see if you get it right or not. Um, and then we got one more Boom Studios book here. We have Mall. This is number two, right? Mall number two, and so this um, this book is about uh, it's really weird because <laughs> it in the first issue it's it, you you meet the the main characters and one one of the characters um, has has been raped and they're at this like women's retreat I guess we'll call it an empower a women empowering thing and uh, you know they're trying to make them feel good about it she's not really like um, is not helping her at all. She's like, kind of like, this is stupid or whatever. Um, and you know, she's, she's got a lot she's dealing with. <laughs> I don't want to give anything away, but there is a twist in the second issue. So I feel like it's going to get crazier from here on out where basically all of the first issue and 99% of this issue felt like, I don't know, regular real life almost. Um, something strange is happening at the very end of this issue. So if you read this first issue and you're like, oh, you know, nothing weird happened, nothing comic booky, you know, um, maybe, you know, check this one out and see if it piques your interest as well. I, uh, I do kind of wish it happened at the end of the first issue. Um, I feel like would have maybe been a stronger point, but I'm still going to keep reading it regardless just to see where this is goes, where this does go. Man, I'm having some trouble speaking today. But um, regardless, um, I, I, so I, I mean, I kind of feel like uh, I, I don't want to say too much about it because it'll ruin it. But it definitely gets gets weirder at the very end of this book, the last page or two. Uh, I think it was, uh, the last couple pages, I think um, something strange is happening in this one in an interesting and cool way. And I think um, things m might get a bit more violent in the uh, series as well. Speaking of violent, <laughs> we got Fight Girls number four. Second to last issue on this one. This has been an awesome series, a fun series, a story so far. I mean, we're basically done. Nothing crazy, but uh, there is some twist, I'm pretty sure, upcoming. 
Uh, there's uh, some mysteries anyway that we don't quite have the answers for, but it's been the fight for the crown of whatever space place they live in. I don't remember the name. It doesn't really matter. Um, I will say about this issue, it, ha it wasn't the most exciting because in the other issues, they have to go through these trial. Well, no, this one, there's a trial too. But all the trials so far have been, you know, like go through this forest with giant lizards and insects and other crazy things or go through this ocean with giant sharks or through this desert with giant scorpions. It's just giant, some kind of animal and you have to get past it, you know. And this one is just the last two women and they're fighting, you know, hand to hand. They didn't get weapons or anything, which I, I kind of was bummed out about. I was like, man, I thought... This would be like a good opportunity, you know, where they're like, you know, here's your assortment of weapons. You can pick whatever you want. And, you know, you go through different things and you're fighting with a spear and then a sword and then a, a, a mace or whatever. I thought that could have been cool, but they didn't go that direction. Regardless, still a fun issue. Um, and kind of, again, getting closer and closer to this mystery that will inevitably be unv unveiled in the last issue. So... Not my favorite issue of Fight Girls, but the series has been good and definitely a necessary piece to the completion of the story. Uh, I feel like they could have been a little bit different, a little bit better on this issue, but not a not a huge complaint. Maybe sometimes we're just asking for too much. Maybe that's what what's wrong with us. <laughs> a couple more books here. So we got uh, last two are Upshot books, right? No, I lied. Uh, this was an Upshot book, the the Fight Girls, and then this is an Upshot book. Uh, not all robots. Almost said Fight Robots. <laughs> This series, I absolutely love. This is number three, right? Yeah, number three. And uh, again, this has got a lot going on, like in the layering of the writing and the representation of what everything is. So again, robots have um, not taken over the world as you typically think, as in, you know, Terminator, you know, blah, 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 killing all humans. But taken over the world as in they are they are the providers of, of humans now. <laughs> they... Uh, they have all the jobs. They're, uh, humans are kind of seen as inferior, not really needed to work because the robots can all do the work. And um, with that, you have a little bit of some like political commentary. Um, for example, in the last issue, I think it was, uh, there's, well, in, I think it was the first or second issue, uh, they uh, kill, because the world's all polluted and everything. So the world lives in these bubbles of like, because um, you can't breathe the regular air, they have to, you know, create the own air. And um, a robot basically cuts off the air to that city and kills the whole city, and, you know, thousands and thousands of people die. And uh, you get to see, in the last issue, you get to see its court case, which is it just walking up to a machine, plugging in its, its thumb drive into the machine, and then instantly it gives a, um, a verdict. Which slight spoiler, I guess, but it's you know it's like not guilty. There's lots of outrage. That's what this issue deals with. Is there's a lot of uh, outrage between the uh, the human and and robots now that are they're freaking out and uh, <laughs> obviously not happy with the uh, the decision made on that. And the, uh, before that, there's been a lot of uh, they call it malfunctions where the robot is you know just fed up because they're very. They're very have a lot of personality. They're very human in many ways, and um, part you kind of feel bad for them in certain ways too because um, they're kind of forced to do this stuff that they don't necessarily want to do. They have to take care of these families and and do these jobs. And you see, like one of the main robots, he's you know trying to aim for this promotion. You you know, and he's kind of just down on his luck, and his family is scared of him uh, that he is supposed to be you know taken care of and. When he goes home and he just goes into the garage and you hear a lot of... See, you feel bad for him, but then you don't feel bad for him because he's working on something in the garage. We still don't even know what it is. And <laughs> there's just a lot of layers to this book. And it's I, I feel like I could really pick it apart. Uh, I wish I had someone else that was reading it with me that I could really just sit here and talk about it for you know a couple of hours. It would honestly be pretty fun for me to do. But I, I highly recommend Not All Robots. It is a very, um, very layered, well thought out book that is funny, scary, um, thought provoking. It's, just, it's got a lot going on. So definitely check it out if you haven't already. Very, very good job. Um, I don't even know who writes this. Mark Russell. I don't know who that is. I have to see if he's working on anything else or, you know, worked on something else before. Last book. 
We have one more IDW comic. We have Bermuda, number four, and this is the last one. I thought it was a five-part series, but at the end it says, uh, you know, it does the classic to be continued, maybe, possibly, you know? <laughs> um, that being said, this has been a fun little journey. Um, story, again, isn't anything crazy, but it's all about the fun and the adventure that's going on. Again, you know, definitely a book that it could be good for kids, but it's been one that I've been enjoying to read as well. It's just about a two kids that get lost, you know, they're sailing, well, they're not the kids, they're sailing with their family, but they're sailing through the Bermuda Triangle, get lost, end up in this an island called the Triangle, which is, again, pretty cheesy. Uh, but on this island, there's giant lizards and fish people and pirates and all kinds of crazy stuff. And it's literally just like a kid's uh, dream, but, like, really well done, you know? <laughs> it's it, if, if you just explain it to people, I feel like it's it's not as, uh, not as fun sounding because it's like, that's a little silly, and it is a little silly. But at the same time, the artwork is beautiful, very vibrant, and fun and big and imaginative, uh, imaginative, and, uh, and the main character, her name is Bermuda. They don't call it the Bermuda Triangle. They call her Bermuda, and then the island's called the Triangle. Again, silly stuff. Uh, <laughs> but that being said, you know, they're fighting fish people and going through portals and doing all kinds of fun stuff. Four-part series, pretty short, you know. Um, you know, I know they'll eventually be a trade. I'm sure we can get them all together if you want to read it then. Regardless, very fun story. I did enjoy it. It will be sad that it's over now, uh, but it's it's to be continued. Question mark. So they might might continue with it. Um, I guess you know, just it's one of those things. that's like if if people really demand more of it, then uh, they might do some more. And honestly, if they do some more, I'll pick it up because again, it was fun. So that is my my comics for this week. I had a I had a good time reading this week. A lot of my Favorite books came out, I feel like. Not All Robots being one of them. Love, love, love that book. Refrigerator Full of Heads. This is one I'm very excited for. Definitely, definitely going to be checking that one out. Uh, more. Doo -doo -doo. Had a couple last issues. Had Bermuda last issue. Ghost of Vader's Castle. Both of those IDW <laughs> comics. Um, Thor, which has always been fun. Uh, love, love the Thor series. Uh, but this was a, a, a more fun issue, than, more fun than normal, a little less serious. And then uh, Death of Doctor Strange was pretty cool. I like that one quite a bit. And then lots of other good books in here as well, obviously. Uh, let me know what you are reading. Put those comments down there. Enter, you know, you have, you have a little bit left to get into the giveaway or get additional chances into the giveaway. I have so many entries. It's like, I think we're... I think we're close to a thousand entries on the on the thing now. I can't remember exactly. It might be more than that. Honestly, I think it's over a thousand. Uh, <laughs> but it'll, it'll be interesting. Uh, by the way, and if you want just a little bit of clarification, I'm just going to do um, a random number generator. I have it all listed out. Everybody that's ever commented, uh, I have it all. Every time y'all comment, I'm, I'm typing it all down as my documents. And I, uh, everybody's name is listed out. And uh, how many every time? It, I can't look on there. And see how many times you entered, but it, you know, whenever you did it, I just wrote your name on there again and again and again and again. And like I said, I think I think it is over a thousand. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I know it's a lot. And <laughs> I'm gonna do a random number generator and do it three times, you know. So we're gonna pick out the winners. I'm gonna be completely fair with it, and I'm gonna announce that again on Sunday's video. You have until midnight Eastern time Saturday. Because then that night, after it's going to be, well, Sunday morning, technically, whatever, I'm going to be making that video. And that's going to go up on Sunday, and all that's fun, good stuff. So make sure you get your comments. Tell me about the comics you're reading, what comics I'm reading. If you agree, disagree, this or that, or whatever comics I should be reading, all the fun stuff as usual, and I will see you next time. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!